Welcome back to my Minecraft mod. So far, we've made a new hammer and a new tool called the scythe, and those are all really interesting, but I'm not even worrying about those because today I have a new problem. Trees. Trees are a big problem. They're in the way, they're annoying, and they're hard to cut down. You gotta go through all these leaves, you gotta get to here, mine it all down, and you gotta clear out the leaves. What if breaking this block right here got rid of all of this. I wanna make a new ax today because I think it would be interesting and fit the mod really well. Speaking of which, this idea was actually recommended by a commenter, guy that likes the number 27, came up with this idea in the first place and I think it would fit perfectly. Now I'm thinking of making this work as more of an upgrade to axes, just quick detour. These, for example, there's no variations between the hammer. There's only netherite hammer, and that's because it's meant to be an upgrade to the pickaxe. The scythe, however, had all the different versions because it's just a new tool. So these are going to be upgrades to axes, which means I'm only going to make a netherite tool. Speaking of which, what am I calling the tool? I just did some like small research on some of the names. I was really liking the name hatchet, but those aren't really meant for big trees. Um, it seems to be like felling axe would be a good name for it. First, I want to make a texture and put it in game. And here it is in game. I'm not entirely sold on the texture entirely, just because it, it's hard because everything else I've made so far has been an entirely new tool so I can make it look exactly like a tool it's meant to be and it was fine. Here we have the issue with there already being an axe. So comparatively, there's not much difference and that's kind of hard to do. I mean, I've, I really try to make it look like a way bigger axe head and try to change the proportions on it. And I mean, yeah, it kind of is. I don't know. I want it to be more than just bigger axe because it is more than just bigger axe. It's gonna be way more powerful. So I'm not sure how to convey that entirely just yet, but it's okay. I can get started on the next part. Future Connor here. I actually forgot to make a recipe for this item. It kind of just entirely slipped my mind. So here is how it works, or the one I at least came up with. It's gonna take two netherite axes, the smithing template in the middle, blazer on the bottom, two netherite scrap, two echo shards, and a wither skeleton skull, which I know what you're thinking. It's pretty expensive main reason I did this one the axe is just way more powerful than a normal axe so of course it's gonna be expensive Two, this mirrors the hammer recipe as you can see right here with just the change being the pickaxes to the axes which likes to establish how they're both upgrades which is why the upgrade templates in there the axes and the other right scrap make you have to collect a total of 10 which is I think is a nice round number for ancient debris blade rods at the bottom because I just want something handle shaped at the bottom the wither skeleton skull means that it has to be a rare chance drop which I think is kind of interesting it's not terrible it's only one and you can get that within like 20 minutes pretty easily and then the echo shards just force you to explore into the deep dark which is a challenging location that should provide some interest to get this item all right so let's talk trees oak trees they're pretty easy they're pretty small and we won't have any issues with just looking at this block and going hey there's probably another oak log above and let's take care of that so oak is easy that's the same with spruce that's the same with birch acacia gets a little tricky because there's always a twist in here but that should still be pretty easy just look to a block nearby but we start to get issues once we move along here cherry blossoms have multiple branches which means we have to check in a lot of different directions and it gets way way worse as you go over here because what do we do with this thing where's the trunk what what do we count do we count the roots as a part of the tree do we let the axe fully take those out i mean on a logical standpoint, probably not, but at the same time, it'd be a lot better of an axe if it could take care of all these roots. And these are just thick trees, so there's a lot of different blocks that can be counted. And then, of course, we have this thing, which I thought would be a lot taller. A lot of blocks here as well. Do we limit how many blocks people can mine with these? Do we increase that with some other mechanic? One thing about mentioning here is obviously spruce two talls as well are huge. So there's a lot of things we have to look into with how we clear the logs. Now, there is one idea where I just do something pretty generic and go, it's gonna clear only logs in a special area, right? But the only issue is that I've already done that with the hammer. Like this hammer, it will work, it will do a three by three, and I could use this to take down a jungle tree, and it will do it pretty well. It's meant to be a multi-tool, so it works in situations like these, but that's why this axe can't work in the same way. Otherwise, what's the point of having the axe? 
So we're gonna get rid of that and figure out a different way to do it. So what I'm going to suggest, and I'm not sure exactly how I do this, is when I break the bottom block, and we're only gonna go bottom up, if you break the top of a tree, it wouldn't make sense that the bottom would magically disappear. So we're gonna be looking only bottom up. So obviously we should check this block, right? To see if that's a log and then tell this log to break. And we can keep doing that over and over and over to get most normal trees. But we should also detect for these cases. We should check the blocks to the right and up like so because these are the types of spots that branches could spawn in on trees of course with the top one included that's about this kind of area from the bottom breaking block there is another case though especially on these cherry trees where the logs are directly next to each other and so we need to measure for cases like that so we're gonna include these blocks as well and i guess that should also be these ones so when you break this very middle center one we need to check all of these blocks around to see if they're logs as well and tell them to break themselves and tell each of these blocks to do the same detection radius where they break all the logs in this type of pattern. Only issue is that that gets big really quick and could mean that if there's a, let's say you built a building that was all out of wood, should you be allowed to chop all of this down with the axe? Of course, I personally think that it should either only do a certain section of it or take tons of durability from you. The only issue is where do we put that in? Do we put that in this part where as it's going along it's keeping track of the durability costs and as soon as it's too much to break the tool we cut it off? Or do we include a part where there's just a hard limit? say 16, 32, and maybe lead an enchantment to increase that limit? I don't know. All I want to do first though is get this detection radius working. All right, I just put it in. I have no idea if it's going to work. The one thing I'm really worried about is that it would loop forever and may cause a crash. So here it should be fine. Yep, worked perfectly. Took down every single thing in this tree. Gave me five logs because it's just one after another same with the spruce tree should be perfectly good same with this birch tree this acacia tree will be interesting because of the curve but it should also get that one this cherry blossom tree is also kind of scary but it should work okay and now we're going to run into issues i'm thinking this tree might cause an issue no Okay, it took out the whole thing. I was not expecting that. This tree will definitely be a problem. I'm expecting lag here. I grew another one, so it's even more up there. If it could take out all those branches, I'll be so shocked. Yeah, that was loud, but I think it got everything. Yeah, the blocks in here, the blocks all around. It was loud, but it got pretty much everything. One last thing, which I haven't touched over here is the mangrove tree and that's because the way it's currently set up does not include the roots right now i can change that and i probably will but the wood in here should still work and yeah that's all the wood inside so i am so shocked that worked so well to begin with i literally just did it in the way i described it over here and it took down pretty much all the trees i just have to add roots to the list and this will be gone i'm gonna make it take the durability down for each block you break to see how that's like. All right, here we go. So I, I just added this in. We're at 1986 for our durability. And for a tree this size, we have exactly four pieces of wood. So this should go from 86 to 82. And it went to 81. And I know why that happened. I'm going to fix that later. This, this will shred the ax. This will put me down only 200. That seems accurate. That's not bad. I thought it would be entirely inaccurate. So I, I just have to remove one extra case of extra durability being hit and that will be pretty good. All right, so I fixed the issue now. So we're at 1799. We have four logs, so we should be at 1795. And now we're at three, four logs right and it went down six another thing i did oh I'll, I'll fix that i'm still working on that i added the roots so that will break almost everything 
The other issue being that these roots, well, some of them are not connected, and some of the other ones, like I said earlier, it doesn't go down, so this is a problem, because it's only going to go up. I'll probably keep that and just make the, I mean, the roots, like, come on, it's four hits compared to one. Like, it's not that bad. Let me continue with this durability issue. I really thought I fixed it. And here we go. We're at 1,665. Minus that by four should be 1,661. And it now is. That was a weird issue. For some reason, you have to subtract damage to give it. If I were to set its damage to one minus its current damage, it makes it go up. So I'm not sure if damage is just stored negatively. I mean, it's, it's so weird. I guess that makes sense. It could be that... The durability is 1,661, but it has like 400 damage, and I had to subtract one. I kept trying to add one. Okay, that's handled. Next on the list. I guess I should start working on some enchantments, especially if I want to get rid of leaves. It's been a very common thing where every tool I have added for this mod has some enchantments attached with it, but that just makes it so much better. That's what makes it one of my new items. There is another thing I want to show you. A little bit ago, I made an enchantment called Magnetism. All you need to know that it does is it takes all the items that you break and bring them to you. So, for an example, I could break this mangrove plant and have it all go in my inventory. And it would have done that if it worked. Of course, why didn't it work? Because I need to make it work. I thought it would work, but for some reason it's not, so let's fix that real quick. Yeah, so that was a really quick fix. I just had to add this item to a tag. You can't see it. It's just this tag called Area Cleaning Tools, where all of my tools that I've made so far are under. So now that will work all into my inventory. Perfect. The magnetism works, so I want to add a another enchantment. I want to break all the leaves with an enchantment. now. The, you might say, whoa, that seems really overpowered to take the leaves out with the tree. You're pretty much deleting this entire thing. And you're right, except that I'm also going to make it cost one durability for each of the leaves, and you'll see quickly how the durability gets used up on this axe very, very quick. I think I'm honestly probably going to use the same detection as I did over there. Only difference is I'm going to go with the blocks below included with it. Um, I'm not sure if any trees have leaves below their like logs actually let's take a let's take a little look around i took a little detour here to the cherry biome and i think my worst suspicions are true so if i use the exact same detection method as the logs with the leaves we would miss these blocks and it seems like this might be the only tree that has a different like method to it which sucks because that means i have to support it Oh well, go figure, go me. I'll make the new enchantment first, show you that, and then I'll make it work on the tool. Alright, so let's go with this. I made the new enchantment recipe out of the usual stuff. All my books have bottles and chaining and books in them. I put shears in the bottom because shears usually break leaves and the order is kind of specific here it's jungle leaves on the right mangrove on the top and flowering azalea on the left the idea behind this is that it encourages players to go explore the world you know you have to go underneath the land go to the swamp marshy biomes and go to the hot jungle biomes to get the pruning enchantment that's the name i went for as you can see here it's all in the collection of all my other enchantments i've made and yeah you just throw this right onto the axe cost of two that's the normal cost and there's only one level of it now i gotta make it work to get rid of all these stupid leaves all right so i think i just put the functionality in here is the first test of the pruning enchant i have no idea this is gonna work oh it it broke the entire thing and only did two logs and none of the leaves that's really weird i think something with like the axe it doesn't think that the axe can break leaves and then it's repeating over and over and over because none of them are breaking is my thought process behind that hopefully that should be an easy fix let me look into it let's give this one more try now oh yep that's loud and it worked there you go so yeah we should now be collecting all of the leaves as well. I don't know why it's so loud. That just seems to be a common theme though whenever I make things that break blocks. But there you go, all the leaves are broken. Which brings me to my second thing. How should I limit the usage? Should people be able to break all the blocks? I personally 
don't think so to begin with. I think it's more interesting if you have to unlock your usage on bigger trees. Like maybe the default one could break all the smaller trees, but then, you know, it won't be able to do some of the bigger ones. You then, you get an enchantment that increases it. Just go from there. I'm looking to make it something like that. I would also like to quickly mention that this whole idea for this enchantment, pruning enchantment, also originally came from the guy that likes the number 27's comment, because he made a comment immediately after suggesting this enchantment. So I love it when people comment uh, good ideas, because then I get new ideas that people obviously want to see because they're the ones who left it in the first place and usually they work out pretty well like this one's pretty cool i like this of course leave your own suggestions in the comments i will most likely read them i read a lot of them as many as i can all right here we go i gotta show you another recipe of course start with the base that you're used to this time we're putting an axe at the bottom and then we're putting different types of wood here as you can tell these are not logs these are four logs in a crafting grid makes you three to get the ideas here is encouraging exploration by using cherry wood meaning you're going to go to cherry biomes uh high which means you're going to the nether and then spruce wood so you're going to your tega biomes stone axe down here just to increase the cost without making it bad and the reason why is right here this is branch the new enchantment and there's a little one right there because that one is indicative of a few levels. You can tell why I have so many in my inventory. And yeah, this is why the ax is in there, just to make it extra annoying. No, I'm kidding. The real reason, I don't know. I just felt right. I put shears at the bottom of the other one. Usually on my enchants, I have a tool at the bottom, so I just chose the ax, because if I were to make you make a whole new netherite ax for every single one, it would be pointless. Like, that would just take forever. Speed of which, this is a lot of books. I, don't, I probably think I actually made too many because you can get up to two and you can get up to three and you can get up to four and five. You can make five levels of branch. I was actually um, going around in my mind with the with this enchantment cost. I was thinking including like apples and sweet berries because they're all like fruits that come from branches. Now I'm starting to second doubt myself. Honestly, for a branch enchantment, this makes more sense and still requires you to explore. Like apples, they're like a little annoying to get. Glowberries are going back to the caves and sweetberries are going to the Tega anyway. The only thing being that glowberries are probably a little bit easier and I make you go to the caves with the other enchantment with the azalea leaves anyway. But you know, that's not... I, I might switch it to that just to give those items more use and also to get the branch enchantment earlier into their inventory now you might think it's insane having to craft 16 books together to make this enchantment well because that's not the intended route whatsoever what you should be doing is heading over here grabbing some lapis and some enchanting because you have a way higher chance or at least you should of getting it from the enchanting table like that perfect branch four there you go so there is lesser of a need to craft these books to get the enchantment so next finally i will give this thing an actual use and limit the um use of the regular axe because right now it's looking pretty overpowered let me get to it all right let's run through some of the changes I did change the branch enchantment to include the berries, the apple, the glow berries. I think it's better this way. It makes sense to me. Second off, I have made the branch enchantment do something. So I can show you the best, I think, with two tall trees. And so I was about to show you these new enchantments until I realized that there was a problem. You see, this axe with no branch enchantments was only supposed to give you 21 logs. And instead I got 22 broken. Not saying that it was making a log out of nowhere, it was just breaking an extra log. And a similar thing happened with branch one, that it was supposed to break 42 logs and instead broke 44. And so obviously this is a deep sign that something was wrong, and there was. Let me show you what happened when I placed another tree next to this one, when I was trying to show off branch four, and I connected them with logs and I broke this block. All right, branch four. And that is two stacks at 53. That does not seem right. So there's the issue that you find when it comes to the way that my counting system works. And it was with exactly what I did right here. All right, I'll, I'll look into it again. Cause I can't get an accurate count of branch four and five when I can't harvest, I can't trust how many blocks it's harvesting. 
So everything that I've shown you so far about the counting system, I've entirely redone. I spent like an entire day of my recording time just doing this. Basically the new system is, it's gonna start at whatever block you mine, it's gonna go through all the attached blocks, it's gonna add all of these positions to a list, and it's gonna keep going through every single block until it hits the limit for the enchantment. So the base one is 21, like I've, I think I've said before and it goes up you know branch one then is 42 and whatever and it's going to keep counting until it gets there once it does that it's then just going to go through the list and remove them all and it's in a really weird recursive algorithm that took me forever to figure out i had to learn how to manipulate files i've created like a json file to store all this i have no idea how any of it works all i know is that it's just able to store data outside of the functions and then recall it. But I'll show you as a test here. So this is magnetism, and I have out for you exactly 40 blocks. There is 20 in oak, and there's 20 in spruce, and the reason why I have a connected this weird pattern is the previous counting algorithm, if I mined this block, it would count these separately from these ones because there was no communication between the recursive functions. Now there is, because they're all working on the same list. So when I break this block, it's only gonna give me exactly 21 blocks, just like the limit says. Now the order that it mines it in is a little weird. I'm not sure exactly how it sorts. It's based on direction somehow. I think it like favors north and east more. So it you know, went east, you know, and then it went up and got all these. It went under here, like sneaked under, and then went and grabbed these. I'm not sure exactly if I should change that to be any specific way. It's kind of random, but um, I, I think it's fine as long as it gets me exactly the amount of blocks that I need. So let's place these back and then let me show you with branch one it should be able to break 42 blocks and this is 40 so it should handle all of them and there it is uh, one thing i noticed immediately you might be able to as well is this new algorithm system a lot of lag with it i'm not sure if that's just because i made it bad or if that's just how i what i have to deal with with all of the uh, file writing functions i've had to use either way i just gonna deal with it most of the time the trees you're going to break are not going to be that big like those trees you'll only need the first level branch in the further levels is mainly for the huge wood types and that makes sense i don't want players to be able to use this axe to quickly get a bunch of wood early on without working towards it with this enchantment of course i feel like you would prefer it to mine all the wood out first and then go grab the leaves so you don't get this i'll i'll try to see if i can make it prefer leaves as well there's some some big changes i'll have to do obviously but that just took so long i'm so excited to share that with you the fact that i even got to work is insane i thought i was just in the, like the worst code spaghetti ever made so i was working on the procedure again i was able to get it working to where it would prefer mining the wood first and then start mining the leaves it did entirely make me rewrite the entire procedure again and then i was trying to go in there and do something different for the leaves i wanted them to break in a different way and then the entire file corrupted and just being as cool as i am i had to rewrite the entire system for a third time but that was okay because i was changing how breaking the leaves works i'm running out of time so i have to do this really quickly anyway this has branch enchantment this has pruning enchantment and it's going to do exactly what you expect and a lot faster i believe it's a lot faster than what i last showed you it's been a little bit so i'm not entirely sure but it did work i'm gonna show you with the big tree now so first off this axe normal axe the breaking pattern's a little different probably not what you expected it broke upwards first and that's because i changed the order of the blocks not sure if I'm the biggest fan of that. The other method did the closest blocks first, and that ended up looking a lot cooler. At this point, getting it working is just good enough for me. What I'm trying to show you now is a situation where all of the leaves used to not break, and the idea is now it would prefer the wood, but I changed the system entirely. So now with the pruning enchantment, 
How it works is if you pull F3 here, there's a little distance thing on the right, and that tells you how many blocks the leaves are from their source. So everything is in between one through six. Those won't despawn, and that's because they're close enough to their source log block. Once you get to seven, however, that is considered too far away, and the blocks will slowly start disappearing. Except there's another tag called persistent. It's set to false for all naturally grown leaves, but if I place this one down, it is now set to true. Even though distance is seven, it's not going to despawn anymore because it's persistent and that's because I placed down the block myself. Those are two checks we run when we're destroying leaves. Now with pruning, this is how it works. It takes out all the logs and then it checks every single leaf in a seven by seven from each log, which is almost the right amount of detection. I'll tell about, talk about that later. And then takes all those leaves, does its own seven by seven by seven check around the leaf block, looking for logs after these are gone. And if there is done, it should technically have a distance of seven. And if that's true, we then destroy it as long as it's not persistent. What I'm saying all that for is that leaves are no longer counted within the destroying count. So this is branch three that took out almost all the leaves and it almost got all the wood too. What I'm really shocked is that it goes top down now, which is it the worst? So if it gets all the way to the top block, pretty much it will then spiral around, it seems. And then these blocks are left, you may notice. And if you hold F3, well, now they're at a distance of seven. So why didn't they break? Basically, it has to do with a very simple thing I could show you right here. So this is a log and this leaf has a distance of one. And this is two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. So one thing to note is that a seven by seven by seven around this log will check this block, check this block check this block but not these ones and usually that's not an issue because most minecraft trees keep all their leaves within this area and that's because at this angle three by three over here this is a distance of six which means it's allowed and would be the last block in a check like this block is included in the seven by seven by seven but there are some small cases where generation will place it just outside the range of my seven by seven by seven so why do I keep it a seven by seven by seven, even if that's not the best technical way to do it? Well, for one, it gets a majority of the leaves on most trees, which is fine. I think leaving a few is not ideal, but it's not awful. It's not game breaking. You're still breaking almost like 99% of all the leaves. Second thing is, is when the leaves are checking, they're doing a seven by seven by seven around them. So this is the new detection radius. It's a lot bigger, but that is just required. Basically, that leaf, the simplest way to put it, no matter what logs are over here, if they're not in that green region, that leaf block always have a distance of seven. No matter what blocks or leaves in that green area, no matter what, as long as there's no logs in there, it is considered to be a distance of seven and should be destroyed by my command. So that's why I use a seven by seven by seven area. And I use the same checking command for logs when it's trying to delete leaves around it, meaning in this current state, all the leaves in these areas will be destroyed. Although that is not the most accurate because these leaves will have a distance less than seven from that log, even though they're not in the range. But most generated trees just don't put leaves outside of this range anyway for most of the logs. But of course, that's just me not wanting to make a new entire command for two separate things. I really could just duplicate, edit, and then rearrange some things it wouldn't be the hardest thing ever and i might do it i'm just running out of time really quickly because i want to do two last things one thing that sucks in this game when using a normal axe is not when you're mining but when you're building and you right click to get the stripped bark logs like these just take a long time to get if you're building you either have to place on the logs first or strip them all like how i just did and then use a stack or so in your build that sucks to do because it's a added interaction either in two different areas that can just be long like there's no way to automate it and there's no way to speed it up and if you need a lot of those it can be bad so you can probably see where i'm going with this i want to make an enchantment that will strip all the logs in a connected region pretty much being able to strip an entire tree is the idea so i put the new enchantment in let's show off the recipe here so everything's the same as usual i put a diamond axe in the bottom because of this enchantment and then i threw these around it 
like that. So this enchantment is called the Barking. There's only one level to it. And since it only has one level, I decided to make the cost more expensive with the Diamond Axe because you're not gonna be crafting more than one. And then the different logs here are all stripped, indicates the function of this enchantment. And of course it's from different biomes so that you go exploring to get this book. This is a repeat. You have to go to the jungle for the logs and the bamboo for my recipes. Dark Oak is a new one. And then the warp set means that you gotta go to the nether for this book. So that's so far what I'll do with that. And you might notice something new on here. This is only branch four. And that's because I deleted branch five. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. What I did is I changed the scaling on branch because the leaves no longer uh, requires branch to work. And instead the base ax is only going to do eight but is going to double for each level ending at 128 for level four and this is why i mined one tree of every type and threw it in here just as a test to see and so level one will easily get you oak most birch most spruce no matter what including also the small jungles and these are kind of estimates so the, especially these last three it there might be some that are bigger that it won't meet there might be some that are smaller that it will meet and then once you get over here as you can tell by the azalea these are the azalea trees i kind of forgot about those as well as the nether trees until this moment for level two you get 16 so that's going to work for all of these most the the short warped and crimson trees acacia will be good the flowery azalea is kind of in between these two cherry it will sometimes luck out and work but sometimes cherry trees have very long branches and it will probably be over 20 which leads me to branch two that's 32 that will easily cover cherry and maybe a few dark oak and maybe a few mangrove especially for only going for the logs like these mangrove roots there's a lot of them, but you're not mining them all at the same time as I showed earlier. So you can probably get that with branch three pretty easily. And then of course, branch four is 128 and that's gonna cover all your mega trees. That's the mega jungle and that's the mega spruce and your branch four is gonna cover that almost all the time. Just wanted to show that off to you because doing this heavily influenced how I ended up leveling the branches and removing branch five, it just made sense. I wanted each branch level to feel important and kind of give you like two to three new trees to mine. And I think that works out in the best way possible. It also makes the enchantment less expensive, which is good for the stone axes because you need to craft like a ton of them, not as many. So one last thing I forgot to mention about these nether trees is the enchantment pruning. I don't know if it's really gonna work on these trees. Right now it doesn't. That's because I only have it searching for leaves. And I don't know if it should. So the one big difference between these and leaves is that they have a way slower mining speed and you also don't need shears to keep them. Like the main tool to use is a hoe. And then the second thing is that they also generate with shroom light in them. And these shouldn't really count as leaves. Like it's a weird gray area. The last thing that really separates these and honestly my main decision factor is that these don't despawn. They just don't despawn like leaves. And that's huge because the main use for the pruning enchantment is to remove the leaves because they're in the way and they're gonna despawn anyway. So the current way the setup wouldn't work with these and also just doesn't make sense. Like these are solid real blocks in the game. They're not just leaves. So I'm thinking of just keeping them. You know, you gotta work to get your shroom lights and you gotta harvest them down in your farm anyway. I think it's better that way. All right, so I'm gonna show you how the new enchantment works to barking. You just take your tree and you're able to right click it and it will strip every single block. And I'll show you that by mining it. All of those are stripped oak logs. Some interesting challenges I had to face. Um, well, for one, I had to figure out a way to set every block to be stripped. So I literally take the name, I then add stripped to the beginning, like of the registry name, and then convert it back into a block. And there was some weird funkiness with that. And then the other thing is I added the ability to shift to only do one block. And of course, you could still do it without shifting and get the rest of them. And the main idea behind that is I kind of want to introduce that functionality to all of the items over here where shift right clicking or left clicking will only target one block. So far this is the only mechanic that has that, but I will be adding uh, to those mechanics at a later time. The first person to actually suggest this was Canal Provisor IO4827 in one of my comments, and I just thought yeah, it would just make sense logically. So another interesting thing about this mechanic is that it does strip through any types of logs. So right clicking this is gonna strip all of these 
like that and i'm not sure if that's the best option because there's two options right you either allow that and you don't and allowing that might lead to accidental stripping of bark because there are times when you have a build and they're mixed together like this and you might accidentally walk by and right click and if you do that like down here for instance now all <laughs> of like everything you have is now turned so that could be annoying. The alternative is, of course, not allowing that. And that can also be annoying because if you're, for instance, building along here and you have a build, something like this, and you wanted to strip all of these and you're continuing to add builds, and for some reason, you know, you already have a part that's just stripped and right clicking this would only do these two, it'd be annoying to run over and right click this. They're both like very minor grievances and they're equally not important. So I don't know what side to fall on. I think it's okay as it is right now. I want to wrap it up there. Next time I'm going to return to all these items and do all the changes you guys recommend me. So if you have any ideas for the axe or any of the previous ones, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I try to read as many as I can. Like I said earlier, all the comments you made on the previous video, I will be taking into account for that episode. But if you want to know when I release that, make sure to subscribe and I'll, it will let you know when I release it and hit like to let me know you want to see that video. But that's about it and peace.